we've had an outstanding election result. We've won 85% of the seats for the constituencies in the Scottish Parliament. We've had the highest share of the vote. We've had the highest number of votes, uh, the highest number of constituency wins for any party in the history of devolution. Now, let me say that, first and foremost, this is about dealing with the COVID pandemic. And of course, as we have been doing over the course of the last 13, 14 months, we will work with all the other devolved administrations and with the government in London. But of course, I think people need to recognise as well that the Parliament does have a mandate for an independence referendum. And what we've said is, once we've dealt with that pandemic, that we want to move on and allow people in Scotland to have that discussion about the future. But as has always been the case, we wish to work with Westminster. But if you look back over the course of the last few months, and I hope we move into a new period, it's the UK government that's been taking powers away from the Scottish Parliament. It's the UK government that's bringing forward the Shared Prosperity Fund as as an alternative to what used to be European funding and is seeking to bypass the Scottish Parliament. So we will... We will work with Westminster, of course we will. It's in everyone's interest to do that. But there has to be mutual respect. You talk about a mandate. Of course, the SNP failed to win a majority and the majority of Scottish votes went to pro-UK parties. How is that a mandate for another referendum? You know, let's put this in the context of the UK and, and Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is deemed to have won the election in the UK in well, December. Put it into context. Don't, don't put it into the context uh, of that. Put it into context of the people of Scotland who, in, on, on vote counts, voted for pro-UK political Hang on parties. a second. Hang on a second. When Boris Johnson won in December 2019. He had a vote share of 43.5%. No one doubted that he had the right across the UK to deliver Brexit on that basis. We've just won this election and there is a pro-independence majority in the Parliament. 72 parliamentarians support independence. The will of the people has been to enshrine the ability of the Parliament to call a referendum in the best interest of the people of Scotland. Oliver, that's democracy. Well, I'm, I'm sure Oliver loves it. Um, let, let me ask you then about what you're going to do. Um, what is it that Nicholas Sturgeon is going to do to deliver on that, given that Boris Johnson has said not now for granting a referendum? Well, it's interesting that things seem to have moved on a bit over the course of uh, this morning. Michael Gove has been on the airways saying that they, they would not resist uh, the Scottish government if they decide to bring forward independence legislation, they wouldn't go to court. So the, the, the Scottish government had a manifesto commitment of delivering a bill to enact a referendum, and that is what we'll do. And we'll respect, of course, that what we need to do is come through the COVID pandemic, deal with that, make sure that we have a, we've charted a course for recovery. And of course, an independence referendum is part of that because it's about having the powers that we need in order to go Okay, so this isn't going to be an immediate thing. You're not immediately going to start to, to draw up a bill and get it through the Scottish Parliament. Are you going to wait until you talked about after COVID? When is that? No, well, well, look, what we've talked about is that we will legislate for a referendum, but that referendum will only take place once we've dealt with the pandemic. Uh, of course, we are making good progress in terms of the pushing back on the on the virus, but we will take advice from health professionals and Nicola Sturgeon as the First Minister will make that judgment when the time is right. We've talked about doing that uh, in the first half of the Scottish Parliament. But of course, our legislative programme will include that ability to pass that legislation for a referendum, make sure that we have that discussion with the people of Scotland. And all shades of opinion need to be heard in that debate. But it is the case that that majority for an independence referendum is our way of won the election, and that referendum will take place when the time is right. Is there is there any world, just finally, in which you would hold that referendum with or without the say-so of the Westminster Parliament once you've legislated for it? But what we've talked about is making sure that we can legislate for that. And we've ruled out that we would be having any wildcat referendum. This will be done uh, on constitutional means. What I would simply say to Westminster is recognise that we're in the same situation as we were in 2011 when the SNP won that election, that we had the Edinburgh Agreement. that saw both governments come together and recognise that that referendum should take place. That's what Boris Johnson and his government should be recognising today.